we're good. We're good. We're good. I don't know. Couldn't see. <laughs> For the past few months, I've been on a crusade of sorts to make absurdly good pizza at home. I make everything from scratch. I even grow my own basil. But I can't get past the nagging feeling that my pizzas are just good. Not great. Then I came across a guide by Chef Steps on how to make a cheap wood-fired pizza oven at home. This is the obvious next step on my crusade. It's the insanely high heat that you can only get in a wood-fired oven that separates the good from the great, the boys from the men, the bagel bites from the can't wait to try that again. In this video, I'm going to build an oven and try to make some pizzas. But you're not going to get absurdly good pizza without homemade sourdough crust. So let's start there. I'll spare you the monotony of watching me mix flour and water. Let's just jump right into the good stuff. I ferment the dough for eight pizzas at a time, then use a bench scraper and scale to divide your dough. These are about 225 grams each. Use a scraper and the stickiness of your work surface to build tension across the top of your dough. If you've ever made sourdough bread before, the shaping process is the same, but just smaller. Once your doughs are ship shape, cover in flour to prevent sticking. Rice flour works best. Dust some Tupperware containers thoroughly to get ready for your overnight cold ferment. Now let's build the oven. You can find bricks anywhere, but it took me five ever to find these concrete papers. Visited every Lowe's and Home Depot in the Bay Area, so you don't have to. I finally found these 24-inch pavers at a masonry supply store. First, you've got to build the base. I use a bunch of cheap 6-inch square stones. Make sure your base is flat and level. This is super important. Take your time on this step. The rest is as easy as stacking bricks. Leave a vent in the back for heat circulation and be careful to set your pavers down gently. And just as I finished the oven, the largest wildfires in California history started burning. We don't need any more smoke pollution, so I had to wait about a month for a window of clean air to fire this thing up. Finally, that day has come. Heat this thing up slowly or your pavers might crack. Mine did. Fortunately though, they're in a place where things won't crumble. Clearly, my dough stretching technique needs some work. You can toss it in the air, or just let gravity do the work like I do. You want it thin in the middle, but not so thin that it tears before the crust sets. The more you practice, the better it gets. I always put dried oregano and grated parmesan on every pizza I make. After that, you can choose your own adventure. This is a pepperoni pepperoncini pie, one of my favorites. Good kitty. Getting your pizza on and off the field is a matter of quick and decisive movement. I've learned a lot on this since filming, so maybe the next video will be a bit better. 
Generously flouring the peel can help, but you might get a little burning on the bottom of the crust. After a few turns in just a couple minutes, out comes an entirely different pizza. And here's one with an egg on it for style points. So was all this worth it? Absolutely. You'll never make a better pizza at home, and sharing pizzas and drinks with friends for a couple hours is pretty hard to beat.